Hi and welcome to another video by Get It Done Home Repairs. Today's project is we're going to be repairing a deck that the railings had fallen out just because of age. Now as you know when, when a, a deck get, such as this gets older the material that's on top of it tends to change color a little bit. And instead of replacing it with new material, we're going to reuse the old material so that once we finish it, you'll never even be able to tell that anything was ever done to it. The problem we had is that these rails were all falling out. They stapled them down through here, or nailed them right through here, and they, they, over a period of time, they rotted away and they were falling out. Now the previous owner put screws in it, big drywall screws, to hold these pl in place up here, which looked hideous, so we are going to do it the, the right way. So first thing we did is we came in here and we took everything apart. Now I'm going to show you how I took everything apart. Obviously I already have the new stuff back in, but it's very easy to take it apart. You basically just take a tool such as this right here and you get up underneath the bottom here and you pry up very little to get the rail to pull up a little bit. Same thing on this part right on the side right here. You know, what? let me show you on this one right over here and uh, you'll have an idea. What we do is we take a tool such as this, go underneath the bottom right here, tap it until it goes inside, and then you just work it back and forth, and you get it to pull up until the nails start to pull out. Now sometimes when these are nailed in, it's very difficult to get the nails back out. And if that happens, instead of damaging the material that we're going to need to reuse, what we do is we come in here with a tool like this, it's a reciprocating saw, or better known as a sawzall. You put the blade in underneath the bottom, right through here. You pry it up just a little bit, put your blade in, and you can cut the nails off below so that you're not damaging the material that we need to reuse. And you can do that on the top here, and you can do it on the sides here. Now, as I told you, remember I told you they used a bunch of hideous screws to, uh, to screw it back together. And these we're just going to leave them in there because if we take them out, we're going to do more damage than good. So those are going to stay in there. All right, so let me bring in there and explain to you how I did or rebuilt this section of decking. This is an example of what tools we're going to need. We're going to need, of course, a hammer. We may need a heavy pair of pliers to pull out any kind of nails that we possibly can. We may need a utility knife, but we'll see how that goes. We're going to use a bar like this here to pry off the railings. We are going to use a screw gun to remove the existing screws that the previous owner had put in there. We're going to need a ruler to measure how, um, how to space our rails apart. We're going to need some fasteners to install the, the treks back onto the, to the 2x4s that we installed. We are going to need a sawzall. If you don't have a sawzall, you can use a, uh, a hand-operated saw, but that's personal preference. All right, let's bring in the garage, and I'm going to show you what kind of tools we use to cut that wood down to size. All right, here's the table saw. We use a table saw to rip the wood down so that we can have the, uh, the quarter-inch piece on the one side or on the top of the rail or bottom of the rail, and the other, the other part of the wood to use for the top where everything's attached. We also used a chop saw to cut the wood to the proper lengths. Again, if you don't have the chop saw like this or the uh, table saw, you can cut it by hand if needed with a regular saw. Okay, so basically what it is, is we, we took a pressure treated piece of lumber right here. We measured the span from this side over to this side, which was 60 inches. We cut the piece of lumber to size. We did the same exact thing on the top right here. We measured the distance between one side and the other, and we cut the lumber to, to size. We then took the, the lumber into the garage, and we cut down the wood right here. And you can see right here where that wood is separated. We took this wood here, and the reason we did it, I would have used the entire piece of pressure treated lumber and just put it in like that but the other sections over here were put together and we want to have it match exactly as the other one was so we want to just have it exactly a perfect match so we took the lumber inside and we cut it down we have the one piece on top as a quarter inch and the rest of it is probably like three three and an eighth inches which is the uh, the bottom part right here we then took the bottom part, we marked where our um, rails were going to go, 
like that. We then took this, held these in place, and we drove nails with a nail gun in through here. I will take you in the garage and I'll show you what other tools you're going to need as well, but that's, that's how we did it. We drove the nails in through the bottom right there, and we also did the exact same thing on the top right here, drove the nails in through here. We then took our lower rail, we put a block of wood underneath the bottom to establish the height that we wanted on both sides, left and right like that. We then took our, our bottom piece of the panel and we put two screws in through the top right here and one screw in here. The one screw in here is to keep it from twisting and the two up here of course is to hold it so that it doesn't move. I'll give you an idea. Like this. We put two screws in here. We put a screw in here and it'll keep the wood from twisting out of shape. We centered it in the opening right here, and of course we centered our beam on that spot as well. Same thing on this side over here, two screws here and here. But what we did first is we came down here and we installed the lower beam, or the lower part right here first. Once we installed this lower part, we then built this part here on the side. We put it in here, and we just left it in here and we laid our top piece like this on top of the railings that we just built. Now this piece here is still loose. We can take this out if we needed to and we attach this up here on top. Once we have this attached we then come underneath the bottom right here. I don't know if you can see that. See we drove a screw in here to hold the railings in place there and right here as well, right here. We do the exact same thing right over here as well, right there with the screw. And now our railings are secured in place. After we took the railings and put them in place and we attached it, we then took our cut blocks and we, we nailed the cut blocks in place right here. And as you can see, this would be the previous owner just drove screws into it, which looked horrible. All right, but we put them in like that. We used our nail gun to drive in a two inch nail to hold it in place, a finishing nail, I might add. All right, and the last thing we're going to do now is we're going to come back and we're going to attach all of our exterior panels such as that so that it will match perfectly. All right, so uh, all right, let's get in there and uh, let's finish this job up. Next we'll take our top rail and we're going to make it even with the wood right up here and then we're going to put a screw into it to hold it in position. And we're going to work along here, making sure that the top is even with it. Now when you put your top rails on, you want to center your top rails so that the gap on this side and the gap on this side are the exact same. 
And of course, when you screw it down, you want to make sure that you're going directly into that beam that we have there. All right, so this is all done now. So as you can see, replacing the railing and duplicating a railing that you had someplace else is really not that difficult. Now, if you are replacing the railings, you can, of course, make the rails whatever distance you want in between it. Check with your local building codes to make sure what the, the distance between the rails should be. But in this case, we were duplicating a section of, of railing that was on this side here, so we needed to make it exactly the same as that railing over there. So what we did is we duplicated the railing exactly as it was. The spacers down here, we used everything that was that was there before. We reused it again because, as I told you in the beginning, you'll never get this, uh, this Trex decking or whatever decking this is to match up color-wise because over a period of time, the color does fade. So we chose to reuse the original uh, boards that were on here now and, of course, replaced the, um, the, the wood underneath here with pressure treated so we never have to worry about this happening again. Use the right wood for the right project. But that's it. This job is done or on to the next. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of these videos, hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications and you'll be notified of future uploads. But that's it. This project is done and we're on to the next one. All right, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.